Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to take to bits a Toshiba Satellite Pro C850-1LV otherwise known as part number PSC BXE and then hyphen or a dash 02P00FEN um, so this machine uh, seems to have essentially stopped working and the motherboard has got a faulty component on it that has caught fire, melted or something, it's certainly melted some of the plastic underneath the keyboard so uh, anyway let's get started so the first thing you want to do is probably remove the keyboard so there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I think seven little catches along the bottom here so the easiest way I've found to do this and hopefully you can see this in the video um, I think I've got another angle of the video which I might put on as well to make it more obvious what I'm doing but I'm going to pull up a little bit on the enter key but not enough because you don't want the enter key to pop off but enough to be able to press in so towards the front of the machine this little tab next to the keyboard which then will let me bring the keyboard up further easier to do possibly with a longer or a bigger bladed screwdriver than that. Let's see whether this is a better tool. Yep, there we go. So I've now got that slightly away from the uh, underside and then I just need to go along the rest of the bottom part of this keyboard. Okay, I'm worried that I've done this in the wrong order. No, I haven't. So, bottom part of the keyboard there. Another one there. Another one there. That one apparently wasn't clipped down well enough anyway. And then just the end one. Right. And then the keyboard is uh, clipped in here, so these clips need to come, the whole keyboard needs to come towards you. So there we go, so those little tabs, when you put it back, sit underneath the plastic at the top there. So that's the keyboard unmounted, and then this clip here hinges up. So the brown plastic, I'm just going to very gently hinge upwards, and then that pops out that connector. That's the keyboard removed. So I'm not sure whether this is going to come out very well in the video without refocusing, but there, the plastic on this case has melted, basically. Whatever component is underneath here, which is very close to, um, so the power comes in uh, over on this side, and then there's a fly lead which goes over to the motherboard and plugs in around about here. So this is very close to the power circuitry. So um, either somebody's plugged in the wrong power or there's been a short or something on the power pack. Or possibly just the component has gone wrong or something inside the machine has shorted which has drawn too much current maybe and blown up that. Um, I will be trying to get this motherboard repaired rather than just throwing it away. But for the meantime, I do have a uh, replacement motherboard. So, which side am I going to start with? Uh, I'm going to go for the underside. Um, take off the battery. Obviously, don't need that in there for the moment. Uh, I'm going to take out... I'm not sure whether you do need to undo this access door, but just to save time in the future, if I do need to, I'll rather remove it now than remove it later. Uh, remove the DVD drive, which is this screw underneath the access door, but between the RAM and the um, hard disk. Uh, 
and for safekeeping I'm going to put that back in there. Right, so the rest of those the screws which are all around here and also on the other side underneath where the keyboard was are all the same size. It doesn't matter whether you mix them up, uh, forget where they go or whatever, they are all the same size, so I'm not going to really be able to easily show you those, but yeah, all the same size, so normally with quite a lot of other machines I just have to map them out on my desk when I put them down so I know which ones go back where. With these Toshibas, it doesn't matter, just throw them anywhere, put them in a pot, and as long as uh, you don't lose any or forget to put any back, you're all good. So around this left hand side, there's one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to do within this section, I think there's one, two, three, just within this. And then on this section, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Also, I'm going to really hate myself for doing this because it doesn't make for good videos, but YouTube have recently changed their rules, and where I used to get paid for having videos like this, because I don't have, or at least at the time of filming this, uh, anywhere near 1,000 subscribers, because most people watch a video once for repairing their computer and they don't particularly need to subscribe. Um, yeah, YouTube are taking away the ability to earn revenue on the videos, which is really quite annoying because I don't make a lot out of it, but it certainly makes it viable to uh, spend my time doing this rather than other things which can earn me money. Um, if you don't mind, please subscribe. You don't have to have notifications on because I don't really mind whether you watch any future videos or not, but from the uh, getting paid point of view from YouTube, just having subscribers would be really useful. Uh, right, so undone all these screws, and I'm going to remove the hard drive. And turn the machine over and open it. So, these screws are all the same as well as the one on the underside. Uh, we do need to undo uh, these two clips, so just hinge that up and then pop that connection out. Same with, I think this is the touchpad one. So see if I can get this on the video. Really gently hinge that up and then just gently pull the uh, connector away towards, we you know, away from the connector on the board. And those are undone. So there's one, two, three, four, five think. Find out whether I've missed one in a moment. But exactly the same as the ones on the underside of the machine. So when you've undone them, they can just go with the rest of the screws. screw doesn't want to come out. 
Oh, I did miss one. There's another one there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Right. Now, I'm going to close the lid, turn the machine over, and I'm going to pull well, so uh, the easiest place to get a handhold is where the CD drive was. Hold the entire case down and just uh, gently pull and work your way around the edge of the machine. And there we go, that's the underside of the machine taken off. Pardon me. Right, to remove the motherboard, there's one screw there, and it's labelled, and this one is different to all the others. So, uh, it's labelled 15, so just remember that the arrow point, uh, with the number 15 next to it is a, is a slightly smaller screw. So let's undo that, and it's much smaller than the, than the other screws. So I'm going to put that slightly further back. Then there are two screws holding in the fan. Again, I'm, I haven't actually measured these. These might be the same as the others, but I'm going to keep them separate just in case. So there's one and another one um, totally opposite. Right, then <clears throat> we need to detach. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five connections over here. So these aerial cables going into the wireless card, just if you're gentle, gentle and ping them upwards, they just unclip. You do have to be quite careful with these, especially when you're putting them back on, because it's easy to put too much force on them when they're not aligned correctly and bend the connectors, and then you can never get them connected again. Uh, so those those two aerial wires undone. Um, then there is the power connector. Just wiggle that out, going that direction. There is the speakers, which is this black connector here. Um, again, just pulls out. Be <clears throat> quite gentle. Don't put too much force on it, where you manage to pull the wires out of the connector. There is this ribbon cable one here. Right, excuse me while I cough. <coughs> <clears throat> there is a ribbon cable one here, which is underneath the motherboard, so we'll do that one later. But just remember, when you're lifting this motherboard up, that there is still one quite delicate connector, uh, or cable connected. Then the video lead we need to undo, which is this one here. Uh, I'm not a fan of just trying to pull on the all the wires which are within this black um, covering, so I would use a flat bladed screwdriver and push against, whilst also being very careful of the rest of the components on the board, push against the connector on the edges to take it out of the connector, <clears throat> and there we go. Now we should just be able to lift the motherboard up slightly this side, because um, you can't just lift it this side because the audio connectors are within the plastic of the case. So we need to lift it this side a bit and pull it, or move it um, towards this way. And then once it's moved a little bit, there we go, you can then and remember that that cable is still connected. We then need to flip the motherboard over that way, there's this ribbon cable, you need to undo that connector and then pull that connector out. There we go, we have liberated the motherboard. And uh, let's see whether I can focus on this. The component which has gone wrong, hopefully that's focused. 
is <clears throat> I mean this thing here so the 12 volts I presume maybe 19 volts or whatever comes into the machine here on this connector lots of random blue marker pen on it and the component which has gone horribly wrong is that one there so to the right of this little gold component it's uh, very much looking horrible <laughs> and uh, as I said to my friend looking like it had a little bonfire in there um, and within the case of the computer itself it melted away this little crater around here so I'm hoping that when I put the new motherboard in and plug it in that something similar does not happen because that will be very disappointing and a waste of about £80 So here we go, the uh, motherboard that we've been sent. Conveniently, it also, well, it even comes with a RAM, that's pretty amazing. Well, it's going to save me some time. I was uh, expecting to have to move across um, several of the components from the previous motherboard. Um, So yes, it already has, compared to the old one, um, the heatsink, processor, RAM, which is under my hand, which you can't see at the moment, wireless card, comes with the power lead, which is also nice, BIOS battery, wow, it's very convenient, save me huge amounts of time. So let's make sure that's the broken one, yes it is, put this one back down. So this one comes with the power lead, so I'm going to swap, just in case the problem is with this power connector and power lead, I need to get rid of that from uh, from here. So unclip that from those two little channels, this should just lift out, there you go, so that's the old power connector, now uh, while I'm at it. Probably need to refocus back down to there. So there's the power lead from the new one. Clip that back in there and under there if I can. There we go. Right, so need to do this the other way around. So this ribbon cable needs to go back in. In fact, let's compare these two boards. Um, it's going to be quite difficult to focus that. Hold on. So, that's the difference in the component that's exploded, it's actually a chip, I was, um, it's <laughs> on the old one, it's so uh, destroyed that you can hardly even tell that it was supposed to be a, just a surface mount chip, or maybe they are a slightly different design, maybe? Yeah, it does look like it might be a different component, or it's burnt up so much that you can't even tell. Right, so yes, back to this. <clears throat> um, undo that connector, slide that blue connector in. It doesn't 
Let's go. Wow, really doesn't want to. Done. We need to try and move these connectors out of the way because it needs to sit on the other side of that. Move the video connector out of the way. Line this up with the audio connectors and all the other sockets. And there we go. You can tell that it's in the right place because. Here, where you've got the number 15, the screw hole lines up. And in fact, you may as well do that right now. So that shorter screw that you've had just needs to go straight back into the arrow with the number 15. Then the two longer ones hold the fan in place. So we're now down to we're back to these connectors. We need the speaker one. Just push that back in. The power one, which I'm going to route underneath that aerial lead. Then these aerial leads, as I say, be very careful when you line them up that they are accurate and in the center, and then they'll just pop down. But don't put too much force where you think you might be breaking or bending any metal because they are very easy to accidentally damage. Right, so that's those reconnected. Video lead, very important, otherwise you won't get anything on your screen. That's securely connected. So, before putting the rest back together, I actually do want to test. Because if I do, if, uh, there's some other problem, say it's blown up the video lead or some other part, then I uh, don't really want to keep this board and I'll have to send it back. So let's see what I can do to test that. So I'm going to have to open that up. Make sure. Okay, so the power board or power button is this ribbon here so I do want to plug that in otherwise I won't be able to press the power button so we'll push that in and then hinge this little hinge down now I do need to find a Toshiba power supply we go this is you can read that it's a Toshiba model number PA3917U-1ACA uh, input 100, and, uh, 100 through to 240 volts and the output is 19 volts 3.42 amps so let's just see whether it works
Uh, I will, just to be sure, do a voltage test on this. On the chance that the power supply was the thing which caused it to blow up. Let's find out. Nineteen point three three volts, which is acceptably within range. So let's see, does it turn on or does the same component blow up again? It's on. Excellent. Which is uh a long way from what the other motherboard was doing. The other motherboard did absolutely nothing. So we can now start putting this all back together again. So this just goes straight back on. Um, something stopping you pushing that down over on the right hand side. Okay, no power cables popped out from underneath the little clip. There we go, move it right back. So all that's in and pressed down. You can put the hard drive back. And screw in all of the screws that go on the underside here. So I'll put the CD drive back. And before I put the cover on here, as a bonus, I'm going to take the RAM from the old explodey motherboard add it to this machine. Get even more RAM. So that's everything except for the battery which I won't put in just yet. <clears throat> The only thing I can imagine that possibly caused the um, component here to get hot or catch fire or whatever it did is on the keyboard there is a little metal catch. I'm not really sure what it's there. It's like a standoff type thing which goes through, as far as I can work out, this little clip here and almost or possibly touches the motherboard. 
Now, there is, around here, a little square of what looks like tape. Uh, where is it? There. So it's uh, not a square, it's a little rectangle of tape there, which is roughly around where that would be resting. So it's almost like they've put, made an attempt to stop something shorting out. So it's the only thing I can think of that might have caused this. Um, anyway, it makes me very wary, and I'm going to put some tape over this little bit of metal in case it was that, and to prevent that being a problem in the future. So all I need really is a tiny bit of tape, electrical tape, whatever. And put that over it. And pinch it around. So hopefully it stays. Alright, before I forget, I need to plug in the touchpad. Keyboard time, hinge that hinge up, put the connector in so that it's flat and uh, securely in there. So the six screws which go under the keyboard need to be put back in, smooth those around. Keyboard back in, clip it back down. And it should be one repaired computer. Let's plug it in, turn it on. Excellent. Put the battery back in and see whether that causes it to catch fire. There we go one repaired Toshiba laptop. Hopefully that's helped you. If it has, really would be uh, helpful for me if you could subscribe to the channel. Um, enjoy your day.